Hey guys, it's Dia Beltran. Um, it has been a minute. I've been um, working really hard and I need to work more than I usually would because if I don't work super hard, I can't pay rent and I can't, you know, buy extras like, you know, first aid kits, long life milk, all that kind of stuff. So obviously because of the situation we have at the moment, I am trying to uh, stock up and so a lot of the money that I'm using that would normally go into um, you know, editing and assistance in that manner um, is actually going to life. But I wanted to do a video. I'm trying to do less political because that market is oversaturated right now. So I thought, why not talk about my experience being part of the Brethren Church? Hmm. I was born and raised in the Brethren Church, actually. I think a lot of people might go, but wait, dear, you always talk about how you're a former Catholic. Whether, I might have said that, but I'm not actually a Catholic. Um, I was christened as a baby in the Catholic Church, but um, at the age of four, I was attending the Brethren Church. My parents are Catholic. All my family is Catholic. Um, and certain of my experiences are Catholic. But I was born and raised, as I said, not born, but definitely raised in the Brethren Church every Sunday. Now, um, there are varying degrees within the Brethren Church community. There's like super strict Brethren Church um, and then uh, maybe slightly less. <laughs> um, and I don't know how many types of Brethren Churches there are, but I can tell you that um, there are, as far as I'm aware, varying degrees in, in the religiosity and the strictness of it. Now, for those who don't know much about the... Uh, for those who don't know much about the Brethren Church, I will say, I'll give you a couple of indicators of what it was like when me, my sister and my brother were little. My sister, my brother and I, to use the correct English. Uh, you had to dress in your Sunday best. So it's kind of like, you know, you, you dress however you want throughout the week, but on Sundays, you know, you dress, you know, with a hat, a pretty dress, gloves, um, that level of, um, I guess it's a respect thing for God, a respect thing for the Lord's Day. And so that's why you dress in that manner. Churches today are very different. Like you have people who just dress in jeans and go to church and don't really dress up. Um, there are so many different types of churches today, progressive churches. I came from a very old fashioned church with old fashioned sensibilities and traditional attitudes. And so that is um, also worth mentioning. Um, also it, you had to have your head covered, particularly when praying, because in the Bible, it says that when a woman prays, her head is to be covered. This is in the Corinthians somewhere. And so I think that's also important to mention. And we always sang in cappella. We never, ever sang with a piano or an organ that was usually reserved for, for sing-alongs. And I loved the sing-alongs. Sing-alongs were probably one of the best parts of my childhood. We used to sing all these old-fashioned hymns that people just don't know anymore. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. And they also had songs like, Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Those sorts of songs and hymns were the kind of music that I was raised uh, singing along with. Um, and so I, I, I have mostly really fantastic memories of my time with the uh, Brethren Church. Now, we don't believe in like having fully qualified I don't know if it's that we don't believe in it, but it never took place. You don't need to be a fully qualified minister and be paid in that profession. That's not what took place. What took place was that we had church elders and they were just men. And these men were trusted elders who um, did their own Bible study, did their own research and um, ministered on Sunday night. So you'd go to church in the morning, say at nine o'clock. You'd go, you'd go to church and you just sit quietly, nothing, just sit quietly in prayer. Um, and that, that was it. And that was for like maybe what, half an hour after that, you uh, had break time, morning tea. 
and then you would go to your classes, Sunday school classes. So you'd have a section for the teens, teen women, you'd have teen girls, a section for teen boys, the adults and the kiddies. And so uh, those groups were spread. And then you go home and so usually I'd go to my cousin's place um, and we'd hang out with our cousins um, most of the day and then we'd go back to church at I think it was 6.15 or 7 p.m. that night for the actual ministry. Um, and that's pretty much how it worked um, my whole life up until the age of 22 when I left. Um, again, I, I need to emphasize that my time with the Brethren Church uh, was full of happy, happy memories. The things that bothered me and that I'm about to talk about is not a reflection of everyone in the Brethren Church. But um, if someone were to come out with stories after this video and say, oh, my time in the Brethren Church was this and this and this, that's fine too. Um, I'm not someone who, I punch right, I punch left, I punch towards my own Christians. I will call out what I, what I think is wrong. I get in a lot of trouble for calling out the Catholic Church, but that's because it is a pattern of behavior en masse. Now, the Brethren Church um, are independent uh, Christian denominations so they're, they're not part of some big conglomerate the way the Catholic Church is and so you know you you will call out a pattern of behavior if you hear about it again and again that's just not the case as far as I'm concerned with the Brethren Church it's just not a thing doesn't mean it doesn't exist it's just not happening on average the way it does with the Catholic Church with the issues that people raise about them or with certain rabbis or with um certain things in Islam or what, whatever, like certain conglomerates. So anyway, um, so I'm going to just give you certain examples of the types of uh, mindsets that existed during, the, during them. Now, when I was a child, my parents had it in their head that I would absolutely develop an eating disorder. There was no doubt in their mind. They didn't do it with my brother. They didn't do it with my sister. I was the child who would end up with an eating disorder. I never have. I've never had an eating disorder, so whatever they did, I guess it worked, but um, it just, it never happened for me. Um, I've never been a heavy person, and I've never been too skinny either. I mean, you know, you're too skinny when you're little, you're scrawny, but you kind of, you know, you grow into yourself. I've just always been thin. I, I can't help it. Now um, I work at it, and I have a lovely personal trainer, and it's a little different, but either way. So there's that. And so... What happened was that whatever it was that my mum and dad, and bearing also in mind, I need to mention this, um, it's not relevant too much, but my father is not a religious person. He doesn't, he's a deist, D-E-I-S-T. He believes that we were created, he believes in a God, and that's where he leaves it. But he supported my mother in um, our, our faith journeys, and he wanted us, I guess, to be good kids. So he always drove my mother and us three kids to, uh, to church. He would drop us off and then he would leave. But he never really participated too much in, in, our, um, in our faith journeys. I just felt the need to mention that. Um, people, I think people think I come from a super religious home. Um, and on some level, one, that's true. But on some level, that's also not true because my dad swore like a sailor. And yeah, <laughs> my mother was the one who instilled faith in us kids and so um yeah so the mindset of the of the brethren church what are they like well um they they guilted me often quite often um I remember saying one time I don't really feel like eating and then they were like no you're going to eat you're going to eat because this and that and your mother is afraid of this and that I was, if you're not hungry, you're going to tell someone that they can't eat. I was a kid as well, but it happened more than, more than once. And like when I was a teenager, I was also like, uh, yeah, no, I, um, I'm having dinner with friends, but I'm, I'm here to spend time with you guys. And then like, they would turn to like their following person and be like, yeah, you see, Claudia has a problem and she just doesn't like to eat because, you know, um, God has given us this abundance of food and she thinks she's too good to eat with us. Little things like that bothered me. That Those are sorts of comments that I, I sometimes heard, which super bothered me. But um, I remember thinking, shut up. Like, just shut up. 
so that was that was one um, one thing that I, I I didn't like that I went through. Um, another time, my sister, who isn't particularly girly, I mean she's gotten better throughout the years. She was such um, a tomboy, very, and she loved sport. Um, definitely the the child genius among the three of us siblings. And she had a sticker, like she had a little sticker that she placed here on her temple. And one of the church elders looked at her and he said, what is that? She's like, it's a sticker. And he goes, oh, I need just be quiet after that. She goes, you thought I pierced myself here? And then he just didn't say anything. Another time, one of our fellow attendees, a young girl around my brother's age, uh, was developing, you know, quite early. And she was slightly heavier set, not not a heavy girl by any means. I wouldn't call her heavy, but heavier set more than, um, she, she wasn't super skinny either. Um, and you could see a little bit of cleavage showing. Okay, she's growing up. I don't, you know, no one's ever seen cleavage on me. <laughs> and, um, oh, she went home crying one day because one of the elders, who I think passed away recently, if it's the same, if it's, if I'm remembering the story correctly, he made her feel so bad. And she started crying and she said that she had to go home, change her top and come back. And I said, what, like, I was like, what happened? And then um, the mother was like, oh, they're commenting on her, on her. And I'm like, oh, like, oh. You don't make someone feel bad about something so natural that isn't their fault. You, 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 maybe the man can go to the dad and be like, I'm so sorry to say this. I don't know how to say this because this is awkward. But your, your eldest there, um, you know, is, you know, becoming a, a woman. And maybe next time she comes to church, she should cover herself a little bit more, um, you know, th there's a way to say it without getting your face punched in. I'm not the person to dictate that because I put my foot in my mouth all the time too. But he made her feel so bad. And I just, uh, another time I remember my mother had decided that we wouldn't do anything for Easter. We wouldn't go to church or anything like that. That we were just going to chill, chill at home, watching movies together, family time, watching um, Easter films things about the Lord and one of the church elders came to the house and started talking about whatever and then he's and then he starts guilt tripping us and then I'm like well we're. he's like you know in the Bible you know it is our job to steer Christians in the right direction and he's not wrong he goes and so you know um we have to we have to fellowship with other Christians and it's it's really you know quite wrong of people I don't actually remember what he said I'm just sort of paraphrasing what I what I, I, I recall or what I think he might have said something akin to and it, and basically it, it resulted in my mother telling us okay kids get up we're going to church and I'm like well wait what we we we, we had decided she goes mm. he guilted my mother into going to church so we were going to church out of guilt and not an actual desire in our heart to want to go, which would probably mean more to God than the guilt tripping. And it was just events like that. My little brother, who was chubby, very chubby boy, our nickname for him growing up was Fatso. And by the way, not that this is the topic of this video, the fat shaming worked. My brother's not fat anymore. My sister and I saved his life. Um, so, you know, little Fatso was a chubby boy and um, he wanted to take his jumper off because he was really hot. And then he said something like, um, I'm going to take, he said something like it was the time of the church where everyone sings, sings a couple of hymns before you, 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 you separate to your different classes and learn about scripture and learn about the topic of the day. He said, I'm really hot. I'm going to take my jumper off. And our Sunday school teacher turned around and said to him, you will not take off your top. We don't need strippers here. She's passed away. But I remember at the time being really angry. Me and my sister looked at each other like. And then my brother's like, 
on the other side, sitting with the boys, he's like, I'm really hot. And me and my sister are like, just take your jumper off. Do it. Just do it. Like, we were mad. It's like, how do you, how do you put that on a little, a little boy? How do you put that on a cute little Colombian chubby boy? How do you do that? How do you say that he's a stripper because he's hot and wants to take off his jumper? Clearly still angry about that one. Um, anyway, we, I think I turned around and I said something like, he's hot. He took it off, um, you know, and his little gut came out. But who gives a crap? Um, yeah. Anyway, these are just some of the memories that I have. Now, these are not, um, traumatic childhood experiences they like these were good men these were good people these were people who um if you'd left your kids alone with with the men at the church it would have not been an issue that there would have been no issues at all like there would have been no one questioning anything these were good people the only issue i have is with their um religious religiosity and their, um, like, doctrine, doctrinal, like, leg legalities as well, because they it's very legalistic. But more so, I wanted to talk about personal experiences that took place at this particular church. But, um, my mother now goes to a different brethren church, which is further out. And they're all, they're all, I was inoculated. And so I, I, it doesn't make me question their faith, but it certainly makes me question their knowledge. I do find that unusual, but that doesn't mean they're not going to heaven. I think there's a lot of people that really need to stop talking and stop saying that, you know, you will not end up in heaven if you take this particular, uh, if you take this particular, uh, jab. 